So at this point, we have gotten everything out of this request that the user might have sent us. We know which full URL they're asking for, but specifically we want to know the path, for example, slash foo. We know the query strings that they might have asked for with this request. We know which HTTP method they're asking or they're sending. We know the headers that they're sending. We know the payload that they're sending, if any. So now we have all the data of this request. We want to package it up into a nice object and send it on or route it to some request handlers. So our next task is to start defining some sample request handlers and set up a routing structure, set up a router so that this HTTP server can look at a request and route it to the right handler that it needs to go to. The way that we are going to conceptualize this is pretty simple. We are going to route requests based on the path that the user is asking for. We want to define handlers that are specific to a path. So for example, if they ask for slash foo, that should go to the foo handler. If they ask for slash users, that should go to the users handler. So the first thing that we need to do is set up a router that can match incoming paths to their respective handlers. Lastly, we want to set up a structure to allow any request that doesn't match something within the router to go to a default handler, which will be the 404 handler, the not found handler. So let's start by defining a router down at the bottom of the file. We're saying that we are defining a request router. We're just going to call it router and it's going to be an object. Each path is unique so there's no reason not to use an object and for us we're going to just define one path for now and that path is going to be called sample and when that path gets called we want the handler to be the sample handler. So handlers dot sample should get called. Now you might be saying what is handlers.sample? We didn't define that anywhere. That's right. So let's go ahead and also define our handlers. We're going to start with an object called handlers, initialize it to an empty object. Now let's write the sample handler. It's going to be a function that accepts in data and a callback and we're going to do some stuff inside of it in a moment but let's also define a not found handler we don't need to write the not found handler in the router because it's just only going to get called if nothing matches anything else in the router so handlers dot not found again it's a function that takes in data and a callback and eventually we'll have it do something. So let's talk about what these handlers should do and then we'll work on some logic up here to uh, actually call these handlers and route incoming requests to these handlers. The data that it receives is going to be a big block of data of everything cont contained in the request. Basically everything we've parsed out of the request up here is going to be contained in the data object sent to the handler there. We're also going to send it a callback and we want the handlers to call back when they're done handling the request and tell us two things. We want to call back a HTTP status code. and a payload. And that payload should be an object. Because although we haven't enforced JSON yet, we are starting to build this API uh, to work with JSON exclusively. Okay, so even though we don't have a way of calling this handler, let's just set up this sample handler so that it can call back um, according to these specs. So it's going to call back. Let's say that when you call the sample, you should get a 406 response. 
and it's going to call back an object saying my name is sample handler. The not found is going to call back the status code 404 and doesn't need a payload. All right, so now we have a router, we have a not found handler, and we have a sample handler. Now we need to modify our HTTP server so that it figures out which handler to call, depending on the path that the user is requesting, and sends it the data, and then receives the called back data from that handler and sends the response and the correct HTTP status code to the user. Okay, so let's go back up here. We want to put all this logic in the request on end handler because this is going to get called for every request regardless of if it has a payload or not. So below where we cap off the buffer, let's go ahead and choose the handler this request should go to. If one is not found, use the not found handler. All right, so we're gonna say that the chosen handler equals now we want to say if the path that the user is requesting exists as a key on the router for example if they're requesting slash sample that exists on the router so that request should get routed to handlers.sample but if it doesn't exist if they request slash foo we want to look at this router say does this router have a dot a foo key it doesn't so we should route things to the not found handler instead so the chosen handler equals does the type of router trimmed path exist is it defined if the type is not undefined that means if it exists then the router it should go to lives at router trimmed path. Otherwise, it should go to handlers not found. Okay, now we've chosen a handler. Now we want to construct the data object to send to the handler. So we're just going to call it data. And we're going to add a whole bunch of keys on it that comprises all the data that we've parsed out of this request as we've been working with it. So we know what the trimmed path is. The trimmed path is trimmed path. The query string object is query string object. The method is method. The headers are currently defined as headers. And the payload is defined right now as buffer, if there is any. If it's not, if there is none, it's going to be an empty string. OK, so that's the data that we want to send to the chosen handler. Now we can actually call the chosen handler. We can route the request to the handler specified in the router. To call that, we just need to call chosen handler because chosen handler now holds the value of whatever that function was that it chose. So chosen handler gets called and we pass it this data object we just made and what we expect back is what we talked about a minute ago. We expect back a status code and a payload. But now we want to define some sensible defaults for status code and payload on the assumption that some handlers, like the not found handler, are going to call back and not have a payload defined. Other handlers might just call back and not have anything defined, or they might have all. So let's define the default status code. Use the status code called back by the handler or default to 200. We also want to define a default payload. 
use the payload called back by the handler or default to an empty object. Okay, so this status code, we're going to say that status code equals type of status code equals number ternary operator status code colon 200. What that means is, again, this is uh, using the ternary operator, which is just a condensed way of using a, you know, an if else. It's saying if the status code is type of number, then it's good. We accept any status code that's a number. So define status code as whatever it is, it is already. If it's something other than a number, including undefined, then go ahead and define it to 200. Now let's do the same for the payload. The payload, the only kind of payload we want to accept is a object. So the payload is if the type of payload equals object, then it's fine. Go ahead and define payload as payload. Otherwise, define it as an empty object. So now, regardless of if they called back a payload or not, it's going to be either the object they gave us or it's going to be an empty object. But now, we can't send an object back down to the user who sent this request. We need to send a string. Every payload that we received is now an object, so we can go ahead and convert it to a string. We're going to call it payload string, and we're going to use the standard JSON stringify for the payload that we are sending back. Now remember, this is not the payload that we received. This is the payload that the handler is sending back to the user. Finally, we want to return the response. So instead of having simply res end, saying hello world every time, we want to say res write head and then status code. What this means is we're using the built-in write head function that comes on every response object received by the HTTP server to write the status code. So if we are returning a 200, we are writing that 200 response here. If it's a 404, 406, whatever, or whatever status code the handler defined, we're writing it there as well. Now, rather than res and hello world, we want to res and the payload string. So we're going to swap this string out for our string, our new string. So now we are writing the status code that the handler gave back and we're writing the payload that the handler gave back, JSON stringified. Lastly, let's take this console log, move it inside of the callback for the chosen handler, and rather than logging out the payload that we receive, we're gonna say that we are returning this response. And we are going to log out the status code and the payload string that we're sending back. Okay. So to walk back through this again, we're calling the chosen handler. We're sending it a whole bunch of data, which is all the same data that we spent a few lectures gathering. We're calling that handler. We know which handler to call based on it being defined in the router. When the handler calls back, we expect it to be sending us a status code and a payload. If it doesn't send either of those, or if the status code is in a number, or if the payload is in an object, we default them to 200 and empty object, respectively. Then we convert the payload to a string using JSON stringify. We go ahead and return the status code to the user and the payload to the user as a string. And then we log out what we did. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and go ahead and start the app up. All right, I have a syntax error. This is a good time to point out what errors look like in Node. 
this is tends to be what it looks like if you have an error that's occurring at the moment that uh, the app is spinning up and trying to process all the synchronous commands. In my case, this error that it caught is that I did var data and didn't have an equal sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in that equal sign. It tried to give me some uh, pointers about the error. So it said that this occurred in index.js on line 43. So that's the line that I corrected. And it pointed out where it was having trouble parsing or under understanding this. Um, when you have syntax error, unexpected token, this is generally what it looks like. Um, it'll be a line number and it will point to where it's having trouble parsing. That's not necessarily always the place where your issue is, but that is the place where the node runtime got tripped up and can no longer understand the JavaScript that you were trying to write. So let's try to start it up again, see if we have any other syntax errors. Not yet. There might be other syntax errors, but it didn't catch any in the part of the code that's been executed so far. It m but remember, the only thing that the node runtime has processed so far is the synchronous parts. Everything within here hasn't really been called yet, and so it might catch certain errors. It might not catch others. Others such as certain things not being defined when it reaches this point. Um, for example, if I tried to use the data object here and I never defined data, I might get an object, I might get an error thrown only during execution, not when the app boots up in the first place. But things such as like a missing equal sign, that'll get caught uh, when you're trying to start up the app because it's actually having trouble parsing the JavaScript. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to Postman. Now that the app has started, I'm gonna switch back to a post request. This is the body that I'm sending. Those are the headers that I'm sending. This is all from a previous lecture. I'm gonna go ahead and send it off. You can see that I got back 404 not found and an empty object back. All right, so the server said, I'm returning this response, 404, and empty object. Now let's go ahead and request a path that the server should recognize, and it should recognize the sample path. I should, in theory, get back a 406 and this object. So let's go ahead and do localhost 3000 slash sample, send request. And great, I got back this object. The name is sample handler. That's the object that I wrote back and it's been turned into JSON. And the status code that I got is 406, not acceptable. Don't read too much into that. I just called it 406 just for this example. You can call it anything you want. So again, the server logged out what it was doing. It's returning this response, 406 code and that. If we request, you know, sample slash blah, 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 I'm going to get another 404 because that showed up to the server as this whole path. It looked for that whole path as a key on this router, couldn't find it. But if I do sample slash, it finds it. If I do sample without the slash, it finds it because remember we are trimming off all the slashes. If I do sample and add a query string, it still finds it because it's parsing the query string separately and really just checking the path when it comes to routing. All right, so it looks like we're routing pretty well. Uh, the HTTP status codes are getting returned. The JSON is uh, getting returned as a string. And so the routing's working, the handlers are working as well. Now we can move on to the next lecture.